Hi everyone, I'm Amelia and I'm going to lead you in a workshop on how to bind a book. So your book is going to turn out to look something like this with a cover binding on the back or on the spine and some pages on the inside for you to keep a nice journal, sketchbook, notebook, whatever you like. Let's get started! The supplies I have on this slide are the essential bookbinding supplies minus the cover. Starting with 21 to 49 sheets of paper, that's going to be the inside of our book. So for the book we're making, go ahead, go ahead and use the basic 8.5 by 11 size paper that you can find at your local store. You can use anything from line to blank to graph paper. You can see here I'm using graph paper this time. But really any type of paper works and any size normally works. But for this video, I'm going to be using 9.5 by 11. So I suggest you do too. Moving on, a pair of scissors is going to come in handy as well as a push pin, a sewing needle, the specifications for the sewing needle are not very important because our book is not going to be very heavy duty. So you can use a thin sewing needle, a long sewing needle, but try and have something that has a point in it. And then we're going to need a pencil, some type of straight edge or ruler. You don't need to have a triangle like I do or any of those circles on the inside, but uh, the ruler measurements might help you out and the straight edge will definitely come in handy. And then lastly, some cotton thread. This slide shows the three options for the cover. And you can only choose one, so I'll give you a little bit of detail into why you might want to choose one. So the orange paper is going to be the lightest type of cover, the easiest to bind, and probably the one you're most likely to have around the house. So we do want the cover to be a little bit bigger than the paper that we're binding with on the inside. So anything bigger than eight and a half by 11 will work. The second type of paper that's black is just a thicker type of construction paper for a thicker but still soft cover and Depending on the size you have, you might need to do a little bit more cutting and shaping to create the right size cover. The last option is some type of fabric you have around the house. As you can see, mine looks a little bit like denim and it's absolutely the thickest of the three options. However, you can use a thinner fabric and if you have extra fabric, fabric lying around, you can use that as your cover. And just a reminder, we want to make sure it's bigger than eight and a half by 11. Take this time to decide on your cover, which one you want to use, and then set it aside and we'll work with it in a bit. The first step to book binding is folding the pages on the inside. So you're going to take each nine and a half by 11 sheet of paper that you have and you're just going to fold them in half, hamburger style. So trying to make sure you line up the corners and you've got as straight as a fold as you can. And if you don't have a bone folder, that's fine. You can just flatten your fold with your fingers and cre creasing all the way down like this. If you do have a bone folder, you can use your bone folder to mark that crease and get a really crisp edge. So once again, you're lining up the corners and then you're taking that bone folder or popsicle stick and you're just sliding it along the edge to create a really fine crease. You can go ahead and do the rest of your 20 pages or 47. If you change your mind on how many pages you want to use at this point, that's okay. Just try and make it a multiple of seven. 
Yeah. You look so beautiful, I want you in my life. I've got that feeling that I miss for oh some time. Keep moving closer till you're standing by my side and let it roll, let it roll on by. You give me love, that's enough we can run off together somewhere. Looking high, up above, together baby we can get there. Let it tell you. The next step is poking holes in each piece of paper that we just folded. So in order to be able to bind the book into the cover, these paper pages into the cover, we're gonna wanna have holes in the fold so that we can sew through the fold into the cover and then back into the folds. So for this step, you'll need your push pin, your straight edge, and your pencil and hopefully it's got a ruler, your straight edge has a ruler on it. So you can take one piece of paper that you folded, grab your ruler, grab your pencil, and you'll need your push pin eventually, but it also, if you just wanna use your needle, you can use that too. We're not quite there yet though. So, I did the math for you, and we're gonna have four separate holes that we're gonna be poking into each signature and sewing through. So that means five spaces. So if you're using an eight and a half by length or width piece of paper, you're gonna to want to separate each mark, each hole by approximately 27 centimeters. So what that means is when you hold, and when you place your piece of paper down vertically, and you're looking against the fold, you're gonna measure 27 centimeters down from the top and make a mark. If it helps you, that's also an inch and 11 centimeters. So you count an inch and 11 centimeters. And then you can either move the piece of paper up from where you just made your mark, or you can just keep going down on your ruler looking for 27 centimeters. I prefer to move my piece of paper up so then I can look for exactly an inch and 11 centimeters in the same place I did last time. And that's two marks, and then I move it up from there, and I make another mark at an inch and 11 centimeters, and then one more. And that's gonna create four approximately even marks along that fold of your paper. So here is a up close bird's eye view of my measurement along the fold of my paper. So if you can see there, I made a mark at all of the different spaces. And if you have a straight edge that has a measured ruler on it, you can do the exact same thing. Now that we measured out where we're gonna poke our holes, we can take the paper and fold it so that the marks are on the inside. And then, with your push pin or your needle, oops, you're gonna poke a hole in each of the marks that you made in your paper. Once it's done, you should have four equally spaced holes on the inside of your page. You can fold it closed again and with your pencil, oh, there my pencil is, mark, put a little arrow pointing up in the top right corner to note that this is the top facing up side. All right. Now that we have this template, we're going to individually poke holes in every single one of these pieces of paper. So, it'll look like this. Using your template, you will nestle it into an unpoked hole piece of paper, open it up so that you can see the holes you made on the first paper, and just go through them again, but you're also poking through a new piece of paper.
You can repeat that with the rest of your pieces of paper. Once you've poked holes in, in your paper, make sure that you keep it at the same, facing the same direction for the rest of the time. If it helps you to draw a little arrow on which side should be facing up, you can draw a little arrow on each of the pieces of paper. Now that we've poked holes in all of these papers, we're going to nestle them into signatures. So the reason I had you choose a multiple of seven to work with and from the amount of papers you're going to work with is because now we're going to nestle the papers together in groups of seven. So what that looks like is starting, you'll fold open one piece of paper and then you'll just layer six more on top of it. So you have seven total papers folded open on top of each other. Try and make sure their crease lines up with one another. Four, And then you'll just kind of stack them down and fold them. And this is called a signature. You have seven papers to make up one signature. And then you'll repeat. I'm feeling it all and let it be true. I can heal it all. I'm healing, yeah. I feel like yeah, I can feel it. I can never let you go. Now that we've adequately prepared our paper and it's ready to be sewed into our book, we're gonna move over and work on our cover. So, to figure out how long we need our cover to be, we're gonna take our ruler and we're gonna measure when all the papers stack together and we put a little pressure on it, we're gonna measure the height of that. So, I'm working with 49 pieces of paper and mine is a little under a half inch. So. I know that in addition to having a, maybe a quarter inch or so on either side of the cover's length, I want an extra half inch for the spine. So whichever type of cover you decided to use, you can pull out that material now. I'm going to use fabric because I showed you a paper example, a, an example of a book with a paper cover in the beginning, so I thought it would be nice for you all to see an example of a fabric cover. So now it's time to measure and cut our cover. Aside from having about a quarter inch on either side of the cover long ways, plus the half inch for the spine, you're gonna want a quarter inch on either side of the top of the cover too. So see how I've cut an extra inch off of both the length and the width of the cover so I have that extra space for the spine and a little bit of extra space for, so the cover covers all of the paper. Hey! All right, so now we're on to making our cover and folding the spine. So, to fold the spine for a piece of paper, it's going to be basically the same as fabric, but I'm going to show it as the example. So, you'll take your paper and then you'll take one piece of paper from one of your signatures. Make sure to keep it facing at the same orientation it is now. Try not to flip it upside down. Just keep it this way so when you put it back, the holes line up. So, to differentiate the the folds of the spine from the rest of the cover, you're going to line your paper up with the very end of your cover. And where that line is here, you're going to make a mark. And then you'll do the same thing on the other side. Then, lastly, with your paper still lined up, you'll take your straight edge and you'll mark a, make a line where each of the marks of the holes in the paper are. 
So where each hole is, you want to draw a line there. You want to draw a line across the spine and there. Mm. There. Mm. Great. You can return your piece of paper the same orientation you found it in. And now we'll get to folding. So the two vertical lines that we just marked, we're going to want to fold and make creases on. So fold in on that line. And if you have your bone folder, you can use it. And if not, just make that fold and then unfold it. And then the other side, same way, you're gonna fold on that vertical line you made. With a fabric cover, it's not necessary to fold on the vertical lines you found, but they'll still be a good indicator. If you want your signatures to be even spaced on your spine, you can take your straight edge ruler and you can, on each of the horizontal lines that we made, mark out in even spacings how many a dash for where each signature will be sewn in. So if you have seven signatures, which are once again a booklet of these, you're going to want to make seven even marks. For example, my spine on this cover is 14 centimeters. So if you divide 14 into 8, because you need 8 spaces for 7 marks, you'll get about 1.75. So that's how I'll mark with a little bit less than a, a millimeter for each line. quick 20 second demo on how to wax thread in case anyone was interested interested in doing that for their book. So with your wax and your embroidery thread you simply wrap it around and create a notch or a hold wherever you can and then you're just dragging your thread down the wax. So starting preferably at the longer end, <laughs> and dragging that thread, pushing it down with your thumb so the wax starts to coat the thread. And I would say doing this three times to your thread will sufficiently have it waxed. And if you don't think so, maybe go for that fourth waxing. But you can already see, I'll show it up to the camera, how that thread is becoming a bit more stuck together. I'll do it one more time for good measure. And here the thread is a little bit more stuck together and a little bit stronger and tighter because of it. These are two diagrams that explain how to bind the books, and I'm going to do a video explanation right after this. You can come back and view these diagrams at any time. For our last step, we're binding our paper into our cover. So feel free to go pause and look at that diagram if that helps you out more than watching me but I'm going to show you how to do the first two signatures and then the rest is up to you. For our thread, whichever type you chose, you'll want two arms lengths, so from your fingertips to your sternum, twice. And then you can cut that thread and you're going to want a needle for sewing and thread that needle 
leave a tail, maybe three inches, but just enough so you don't feel like you're worried it's going to pull out at some point. All right, the first step is to take your signature and we're going to start for this first signature in the second hole. Starting in the second hole, we're going to thread that through, pulling and once again leaving a tail. Same thoughts, make it as long as you want so you don't feel pressured that you're going to make it pull through. Next we're going to thread into our cover. So finding those horizontal lines on your spine and maybe even those marks you made, stick that needle through your cover where the second hole of your signature meets your cover. And here you can pull the tail and push that book right onto your spine. Now we're going to go in to that top hole, that very first hole, from the outside. So first, so I know how to go in, because I don't have any marks on the outside, I'm going to go from the inside and poke a hole with my needle so I can make a mark and see where that hole is going to be. So now that I see where I want my needle to go, I take it out and I thread it through that hole where I had made a mark. So pulling it through the cover and now the outside has one stitch. Once you pull it through the cover, open up that signature and pull it through that, thread it through that first hole and pull it through. Next, we're going into the very bottom hole, that fourth hole. So, you can do them one at a time, first threading that needle through the signature, and then threading the needle through the cover on that horizontal line. Next, we're going into that third hole. So find the place on the cover, and if that means making a mark for yourself, make that mark and then thread that needle through. Once again, once you've threaded it through your cover, thread it through that third hole in your signature. making sure it passes through every single signature. There we go. And now, pulling it tight, you'll see two stitches on the outside of your book. We're going to go through that second hole one more time and thread outward just through the signature. Oops, lost that. Make sure you can pull that tail tight and you can pull that string tight that all of the stitches on the outside and on the inside of your book are tightly bound. That way your book won't fall loose, the pages won't fall loose. And that is your first signature. You've sewed it in. Now when I re-thread my needle, we're going to go on to the second. So, feel good about yourself that you've come this far. Let's go on to the next one. From that second hole in your signature, 
you're gonna thread into this second hole of your next signature. So, it's like connecting two-way street. Hello. that needle through and now you're on to your second signature here for our second signature we're gonna go from the second hole up to the first And out into that cover maybe you're doing them both at the same time now because you're starting to feel like an expert if not that's fine you can just thread through that first hole and pull it tight then thread into that cover where your first hole wants to be I see one of my strings is loose here, so I'm going to go back and pull that. Alrighty. Now I'm going to go into the second signature of my second, of this, the second hole of my second signature. So I'm going to thread right next to that first thread and and come through my cover and then thread through that second signature where we've already threaded through but not from the cover so there's already a, there's already a thread in there that's okay, that's what we're looking for. Next, we'll go on to our fourth hole in our second signature. Poke that hole through and into our cover. And then back into the third section, third area where the hole is. So we're going into the third hole in our second signature now. Once you've pulled that tightly, we're going out into the second, and then exactly where we were last time, we're adding on another signature. So go back to that diagram if you're still a little confused, and it'll take you through sewing the rest of the pages. And then finally, I'll show you how to tie off. Have two signatures left I only have this much thread so I'm gonna need to connect more thread and tie a knot to join them so the way to join and tie this knot is to make a loop so the tail is underneath the thread see how that tail goes behind the thread and then with the new piece of thread I'm doing about an arm's length you create a similar loop. It doesn't matter which way the tail is facing on this one. You 
weave the two loops, you put that one, the second loop underneath and through the first loop, and then you take that tail of your first thread and you stick it under and pull it through that second loop. If you want to tie another knot on top of this one for extra security, go ahead and do so. That's it. Back to sewing those last two signatures. Finished our final signature, so it's time for us to tie off the ends of our book, sewn book, into knots. So first, you're going to do a simple knot, and that's pretty much it. You're going underneath the thread that you sewed together and then around and through that loop you created to tie an overhand knot. Now my thread is short enough that my needle didn't go all the way through but see I still have that knot and I'm gonna pull it tight both ways to tighten it even more And then I'm going to make one more knot in that same way. And that's it. Do that on both sides of your book and you're done. So you finished your book. Whether it looks more like this fabric one or more like this paper one. You did it and congratulations. And go Firebird Community Arts, woo!